<laughs> Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwill, and over there is John Lewandowski. And our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 302, West Tower Avenue, to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They'll outfit you with all your hockey needs. You can call them at 404-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Today, the Milwaukee Admirals finished up their uh, visit to Central Canada, which is Manitoba, um, and they took on the Moose. The Moose are riding a nine-game home losing streak going into this one, so not playing good at home. Um, the Admirals obviously riding a 16-game win streak, so let's get into it. All right, so the Admirals took on the Moose. Okay, shots on goal in the first period, Milwaukee outshot Manitoba 8-7. to seven. In the second period, Milwaukee outshot Manitoba 9-4. to four. In the third period, both teams in nine shots, and Milwaukee outshoots Manitoba 26-20. Now on the power play, Milwaukee went one for four with 24 minutes, five infractions, while Manitoba went one for four with 25 minutes, seven infractions. Scoring in the first period at the 8.53 mark for the Admirals was Yusuf Parson scoring his first, assisted by Kevin Gravel, his sixth, and Liam Foody, his fifth. <clears throat> then at the 9.14 mark, Manitoba scores with a goal from Parker Ford, his ninth of the year. This is by Kyle Capobianco, his 28th. Then at the 15-33 mark, Manitoba scores again with a goal from Simon Lumpmark, his second of the season on the power play, assisted by Axel Johnson Jalby, his third, and David Gustafson, his first. Then at the 16-08 mark, the Admirals score again with a goal from Mark Delgaizo, his 8th, assisted by Fedor Svechkov, his 20th, and Zach LaRue, his 19th. All right, and then that first period as well, we lost Ty Feliber for a knee and a game misconduct. Um, and then Stewart got a 2-minute, a 5-minute, and then another 10-minute misconduct. So Feliber got a game on uh, Dean just Dean Stewart for them, who was the one that fought him. Um, he got a 10 minute instigating, so he was out. I didn't see him come back in the game either. So from um, oh, in the second period we lost uh uh the door Svechkov. Um but in the second at the 15 or 415 mark is uh Christian Reichel scoring his eleventh. With an assist from Jeffrey Veal, his 11th, and Parker Ford, his 14th. Then Yusuf Parson gets his second of the season with an assist from Jordan Gross, his 14th, and Phil Tomasino, his first on Mount Powell at the line. That will knock things up. Then in the third, Liam Foody with. If you get a chance, to watch the highlights from this game. Liam Foody left that defenseman's jock strap in the Jets locker room. Mm -hmm. And if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't oh, think this was course. basketball, but somehow he broke his ankles. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's the equivalent of getting juked in the NFL and just whipping. Mm -hmm. Even it wasn't even like that. It was like almost standing still, and your ankles just went. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh Foodie scores his seventh with an assist from Joachim Cabell, his fifteenth. And what a series by Spencer Statsny on that. By the way, yeah, uh, an offensive zone broke a stick. Took a or made, went to make a slap shot, broke his stick, and he went back on defense, blocked the shot, puck pounced to Kevel, and Booty buried it. Spencer er Statsy earned every part of that assist. I I give him. They have been playing phenomenal. 
Um, you know, three stars in the game were Zachary LaRue with an assist, Parker Ford with a goal and an assist for Manitoba, and then Liam Foody with a goal and an assist, including the game winner. In net for the Manitoba Moose is former Rockford Icehawks goalie and Chicago Blackhawks goaltender, Colin Delia. Colin Delia stopped 22 of 26. In net for the Admirals was Yaroslav Askarov stopping 17 of 20. Not the greatest game. But I'll take the points. A big game tomorrow. Um, no, well, not necessarily. Actually, I think that's on Thursday. Um, give me a sleep. Ah, second here. Wednesday. Wednesday. Texas versus Grand Rapids. That is a game I will be watching. I. I'm wanting Texas to win this game, by the way. Um, the Admirals have now won 17 straight, tied for second most in AHL history. The Admirals are close to 70 points. Um, they're at 69 at the current moment. Um, Texas is at 53, Grand Rapids is at 52. So, as long as that game doesn't go into overtime, and we'll have a game in hand on Texas. Actually, we'll have two. We'll have two games in hand on Texas. Um, I'd say Grand Rapids losing would be helpful, but at the same time Grand Rapids winning would be helpful. So, um, we have a 24 point lead on fourth place, which is the last place in our division that makes the playoffs. 24 points. Um, losing Fedor Svechkov, that could be big, but next man up policy. Um, to be honest, do you think the run, did, going in to this month, did you think the run would at last this long? No. We're, we're talking it's February 19th. We haven't lost this year yet. Gotta put the uh, little candles out with the prayer circle. <laughs> um, if I have to, I will. I got enough candles. <laughs> um, but you know, what is in in all honesty, what would you say is probably the driving factor in this? Um because it's not the same guys every night scoring. No, right. I mean it's almost weird to say, but I think this is the best team we've ever had. Yeah. I mean, we're setting franchise records. Our goaltenders are both tied for most consecutive wins at this. And they have, they both are holding the record. Right. You know, like, as much. As I want to find something to complain about this, you know, um, I, I want to know where we got the Wolves on Thursday. Yeah. That should not be much of a problem. By the way, I don't know if you were aware, but Jankowski was sent back to Nashville right before the game. Okay. No, I wasn't aware. Okay. Oh, Texas just lost uh, Puglia and Petrovic. Uh, they did, however, get back Matei Blummel. Um, that was on. And, and Matt Luff uh, signed to Grand Rapids. So they're getting a little bit of help. Um Around the alumni movement, Magnus Helberg will be playing uh, backup goalie in 
Pittsburgh for a little bit um, with injuries there. Um, and Anthony Richard's currently playing for the Bruins. So that's kind of cool. So there's a yeah. guy moving around a little bit. Getting some chances. Um... I I honestly don't know how much more to say. There's like no moment moment at any time where I have felt like we're gonna lose this game. Like I go in thinking we can, but no no moment have I felt like we've ever been out of it. I, I felt like we were behind the eight ball a little bit. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever felt like we were out of a game. The Admirals this year are... At home, they are 19-4-0-0. Excuse me. No overtime losses, no shootout losses, four losses at home. Yeah. On the road, they are 15, 6, and 1. And in their past 10 on the road, they are 8 and 2. I forgot to mention what they were at home. Yeah, they're headed out at home. The Admirals are last in our division on the power play. And we're fifth in the division and penalty kill. What do you... So the penalty kill and the power play aren't what's doing it. Um, the Admirals have eight. Eight sure-handed goals. The closest teams are Lehigh Valley and Coachella Valley. The Valleys! They got four. The Admirals have three overtime, four in overtime this year. They have four overtime wins and three shootout wins. <laughs> so I mean the only thing I, I not to quote our radio guy but good teams we just find a way keep finding a way keep finding a way All right. um with Svechkov out do you think that they call someone up possibly Would you give Nolan Burke a shot? He's been really good down there in Atlanta lately. Yeah, it would be nice to see him get a shot. I don't think Mutter's the answer. No, I don't either. So, I mean, unless you want a gritty physical presence, then yeah, he's the answer. But I don't think, like, offensively, he's the answer. So, um... It, it, for me, uh, with Gasavich already up, I, I, it would be Burt. So, and is how close is is uh, Cody Hudson to returning? How close is Angelo to returning? Uh, how bad is Svechkov's injury? Is it a stinger? What is it? What happened? How long? Who knows? You know, like there's yeah. so 
lot to unpack here, um, and we'll cover all of that on our next show, which will be on Thursday, probably about this time. Uh, they play the Wolves at 11 in the morning. Yay. Uh -huh. I don't like 11 a.m. I always busy around that time. But it is what it is. We don't get to fix the schedule. <laughs> uh -huh. Um. Yeah. Yes. Uh. Regarding the Preds, what's your thoughts on that game against St. Louis? Um. I know we didn't really see much of it. Yeah. Uh, they did end up winning four to. I think it was like four to one or four to two. I think it was four to two. <clears throat> five to two. Five to two. Um, do you think this deters them, or do you think they're still listening? I think they should still be listening. I agree. Um... Obviously, if a deal comes along and just like you know, I, I, I honestly think that what so yeah, like I, 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 I would listen, but I'd be really tight about it. Yeah. If, if 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 the deal's not right, if you don't feel like you're getting back what he's worth to you, then fine. Let Yarrow come up next year and um figure it out then. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've got a year to figure it out. So. Um, by the way, wanted to congratulate the Daytona 500 winner, William Byron. Congratulations to uh, Hendrick Motorsports Racing uh, ending a 10-year drought in the Daytona 500. So congratulations. As you know, um, this is the signal fire for racing season. Um, as we gear up for racing season, please go over and like the page of TNT Racing as we will be on their uh, sportsmen and four cylinders for this season as they are gearing up to race at Slinger Speedway, Madison International Raceway, the Dells Race Park, and um, a racetrack in Michigan I cannot pronounce. <laughs> mm. I cannot pronounce it. It's like Osawa Raceway or something. Osawa. Osawa Raceway, I think it is. Correct me all you want to race fans and the proper pronunciation I'll take the heat on that one, but I tried. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like me still trying to say Giannis's last name. Mm -hmm. Still can't get it right. All these years. One out of ten times I'll get it right. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, just a lot to look forward to uh, for Admirals fans. Admirals fans, remember there are still Plenty of good seats for this, uh, what is it, Saturday night? Yeah. Uh, Jackson Dean. So, race fans, you heard that. Country concert. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, that is not me stereotyping. I, I like racing and I like country. So, uh, I fall into stereotype. <laughs> oh, well. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's all we got for you. Thank you. And have a wonderful, wonderful week.